Hello and welcome back to Soul Infused Monday, your show for an inspired and meaningful week. And today's topic is part of the Radical Acceptance series that I'm in right now called Radical Acceptance in the Bedroom. Become more confident and take charge of your own pleasure. So we're going to talk about sex today. We're going to talk about self-love. We're going to talk about a lot of things. And I invite you right away, before I dive into anything, grab a journal, a notebook, a pen and a paper. You want to have something to make notes, uh, to write down any inspiration that you get, any aha moments or questions that you want to write down. Make sure that you have something to write, grab a glass of water, remove any distractions and allow yourself to be fully present here. Now, I know that this topic can be quite shameful, quite awkward, quite embarrassing, even scary. And I want to give a disclaimer in the beginning right away, uh, or a little bit of a, a warning is too much, but this type of topic, anything related to sexuality, anything that is a little bit outside of the comfort zone can easily trigger things in you. So if, if you feel yourself getting triggered, if you feel yourself feeling something or judgment or shame or whatever it is, simply observe it. Observe it and write it down and allow yourself to simply take in what's relevant for you. I'm not uh, the expert of, of things, right? And at the same time, I've been on the, on, on the journey for a long time. I've been working with women and men for over 18 years. And as a therapist, as an energy healer, as a self-love coach, sexuality is a big piece. And it's also a very important piece of our lives. Now, before I dive in, let me know where you're watching from, where you're listening in. Leave a comment below, say hello. And I invite you to join the conversation. This is not only about me talking. I want to invite you to ask me questions, share your experiences. And I'm very aware that this might be a topic where you might not want to expose yourself. Totally okay as well. You can always private message me. But for the sake of actually already making a shift in becoming more confident in taking more charge of your own sexuality reach out leave a comment below even if it's just a hello so i know you are here with me a few other things that i want to say obviously this is a huge topic this is a huge topic um and i'm only gonna be able to touch upon a few you know points so we're going to scratch the surface here and obviously there might be more work to do, there's more to discover and I'm happy to continue the conversation and I'm also inviting you to reach out to me personally if you need personal support, if you're looking for someone that is, can help you navigate through some of the blocks, traumas, beliefs, anything that is in the way for you to fully love and accept yourself and to enjoy yourself also in your sexuality. Now, if you're new to my show, I am Sonia Bueno de la Torre, and I'm doing this call weekly every Monday. And today we're going to talk about sex. I'm going to use words like masturbation, orgasm, I don't know, maybe vagina, different words. So if that triggers you, if that's something that makes you feel uncomfortable, or if you don't want to hear anything about this, this might not the best week to join today. Otherwise, you are super welcome and is it is such an important topic to be open and honest about it. And it is more focused for women. I am a woman, I'm a heterosexual woman, just as a disclaimer. And so I'm gonna uh, talk from that perspective. And at the same time, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about or feelings apply to anyone, men, women, no matter which sexual you know, preference you have, um, but I wanted to give that ex ex um, disclaimer as well. Okay, so, sorry, I just got, okay, I'm back here. And uh, I have a comment here, sex is very unimportant in my marriage, but we have lots of affection. Yeah, that's an interesting comment, right? 
it's the same when we, uh, anything that we say, oh, it's unimportant, then it's obviously not a fulfilling part in our lives. Because, um, and I understand that, I was in a very long-term relationship and sex is not the most important thing, but it's an important part of uh, relating as a human being. And it doesn't have to be. So um, whatever would resonates with you is gonna be valuable here. Um, why I wanted to talk about this today is when it comes to acceptance, to accepting yourself, to accepting your body, to be authentic, sexuality is a part of it. It's a part of it. And I am very passionate about creating change in the world, not only for women, for men, for everyone. I'm a huge advocate to bringing love, understanding and acceptance into this world within every individual, but also within relationships. And that doesn't matter whether you are single right now, whether you are in a committed relationship, whether you are in, a, in an open relationship, whether you are married, very, whether whatever status you are in, we are as a human being also a sexual being and sexual energy is not only the sex act itself. When we are disconnected, when we are disconnected from our sexual energy, it's also disconnected from a certain level of our life force because we are, if we want it to be true or not, we are sexual beings. We procreate through sex. We wouldn't exist if we wouldn't have sex. So I wouldn't talk to you, you wouldn't listen to me, right? And unfortunately, we've been so conditioned to feel ashamed of it, to feel ashamed of our bodies. Men and women are differently conditioned, but especially, especially women, we are so conditioned to take worth or how we feel about ourselves for our appearance, to neglect our own needs, to feel ashamed of maybe talk, talking openly, talking openly about sex and what you like and what you don't like. So I want to open up this conversation and I've never had so little comments and then right now, so I know this topic is a little bit is a, is a little bit uncomfortable for you guys, and that's okay. It's it, it's 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 okay. But I would, if you dare to be open, um, just let me know. Would you like? And it's a simple yes or no question. Whether no matter where you are, just a yes or no question, nothing more. Would you like? to be able to express yourself in a better way so that you actually get your needs met and that you have a more fulfilling relationship in your sexual life? Would you like to have a more fulfilling sexuality? And would you like to be more confident and to take more charge? Just a simple yes or no. That's all there is. You don't have to explain, share any details. And my answer is yes. I've been on this journey for a long time. When I was young, I did never enjoy my sexuality. I didn't know what I liked. I hated my body. I was super awkward. I was super ashamed. Um, I, I didn't even know, like for the longest time, you know, even in the past starting having sex, I didn't have an orgasm for a long time. I didn't even know how that works. And um, so through the inner work that I've done over so many years, the honest truth is I had, opened up later and I had the best sexual experiences in my 40s because all the inner work that I've done, also embracing learning how to love myself, learning how, how my body operates, having more confidence, learning how to communicate, understanding myself and others better. So, and then that opened up a totally new avenue for me. And now that I'm moving into a new chapter in my life, I turned 50, I am recovering from surgery, my, a lot of body issues were coming up, a lot of old trauma that was coming up for healing. I believe that my best sexual experience is yet to come. And, <laughs> and, I've, and I've worked a lot, I feel good where I'm at right now, and I know, and it has nothing to do with age. So um, obviously, yeah, we might feel more sexual um, in our earlier years and you know when we're than 80 90 100 maybe sex is really not that important anymore but that's not where i'm at yet so i'm still a very sexual person um, so yes thank you pamela for your honesty and your courage to comment here with a yes i want more sexual confidence 
Um, and Megan, thank you for sharing that. I'm so with you. Megan is sharing. I have certainly had the best sexual experiences in this past year because of the inner work I've done. Yes, because of the inner work I've done. So this is not, this is not a substitute for inner work. You, you can use it as inspiration. You can use it as in, yeah, insight, motivation, and yet the deeper inner work that might occur, need to be done, you still have to do that. So that's not a substitution here. But I want to talk about a few things. Um, one thing that is really close to my heart, and I believe it will make a huge difference between men and women, again, or your version of it, because of the conditioning of a so long, right? There is a certain misconception, beliefs, woundings, and a lack of communication. And I do believe that women or the feminine energy, the intuitive, authentic, natural feminine energy is going to make a huge difference in the shift on this planet. Not by fighting and judging and blaming the other person or man for being insensitive, for not knowing, for whatever, you know, we judge them for. And to see that they're as wounded and conditioned and fucked up as we are on some level. And to support each other, to educate each other. And to, I do believe that us women, and I'm not saying it's easy because I'm one too, and I'm doing the same work that everyone else is to communicate. If we don't communicate, nothing will change. I give you an example of this. Um, if you don't communicate what turn, for example, what turns you on or what you like in the bedroom or somewhere else, it's untitled. You obviously we have sex way in many other places than in the bedroom. But if you don't communicate that how likely will you get what you need or want? Now, I want to even go further back. In my experience, I was one of them, and I've, I'm, talk, I'm talking to women and men all the time. A lot of us don't even know specifically what we like or what turns us on. Okay, so think about that for a moment. So make a note. There's one, one invitation I have for you. Make a note, create a list. And not right now, but you can do that while we talk or after the show. Create a list about the things that turn you on and the things that turn you off. And if you want to use that, not necessarily for sexuality, do it for life. Because being turned on, being in a healthy sexual energy it does not mean that you have to have sex. It means that you are vibrating a certain way. You are loving life. You are turned on by life. You are turned on by who you are being. You, are, you can enjoy interactions. It doesn't, it's not necessarily only sex. I want to be very clear. However, if we disconnect and block and judge and shame that part of us, we have to hide it. And when we hide it, we cannot fully express ourselves. Does this make sense so far? I want to hear some comments here. Like, uh, let me know, is this landing for you? And if you don't want to leave a comment, just click the love button or the like button so that I know this is actually landing for you. This is something that's relevant for you too and something that you want to explore deeper, right? So create a list. Create a list of the things that turn you on doesn't have to be only sexually, but what makes you feel good? What makes you feel alive inside and outside the bedroom? If you don't know what turns you on, how would anyone be able to actually even give that to you? So you get to be in charge of your own pleasure. We as women, on a massive scale, get to shift that and to start communicating in an open and honest and confident way without blame or judgment. I know it's not easy, it's not gonna happen overnight, and at the same time, there's always one step that you can take. Thank you, Pamela, for, for sharing. 
That also means there are certain things that need to happen. There's one thing that I'm very adamant and I know where it comes from and I know it, and it doesn't come from any judgment, but because women are so different and we, it's such a vulnerable state to be, we are all driven by the fear of rejection. We are afraid of being judged. We are afraid, you know, we have our own shameful parts in our body. Therefore, we create this vulnerability and often we don't dare to speak up, right? Who can relate? I mean, I raised my hand big time. I don't know one woman that I've spoken to in all these years, including myself, that has not done something it, while having sex or, and I'm not talking about abuse or rape or any of this, like consensual sex, but we still do things that we actually don't really enjoy. We do things that we don't really want to do, but we think we have to because, you know, we want to finish. Or we know it would feel better, a little bit different, but we just don't dare to speak up, right? And it gets to the point that, and statistically, this is mind blowing. This is like so shocking and sad, but um, that most women once or even several times, or maybe always fake an orgasm because they are, do not feel confident sharing about their experience or because they believe something is wrong with them, right? So that has to stop. Because when, if we don't stop, we won't create a change. And when I, when I speak to men about this very openly, and um, I'm very blessed that men open up to me very, very honestly and openly, and I think it's also just part of me creating a safe place where I don't judge and shame for the experience. But for example, porn, a lot of men, and not that women don't watch porn, that's not the point, but I'm saying it's conditioned to believe that that's what women want. Now that there might be some truth in it for some women, but how we are educated, we are not really educated, but most people learn, actually also young men or even women, watch porn and think, okay, that's how sex should look like. That's what women like, that's what men like. And so we are so conditioned. And if we don't change that image, if we don't communicate, hey, listen, I, um, I don't like being treated like that. Or I, I like to, you know, uh, have a longer foreplay. Or I don't want to, whatever it is, you know, like you have your own version of it. But if we don't communicate it, it stays to believe that that's actually what, what we want. Okay? So, um, and again, I don't get a lot of feedback from you today and that's totally fine. So I don't know if this is landing or not. So I'm just going to give you a few more pointers that are coming through me for today. And it's such an invitation and it comes from a, from a real place of knowing the pain and the shame and that feeling of not being good enough, the feeling of being afraid, not feeling safe, out of trauma from the past. We are all so traumatized. The, the, the amount of sexual abuse in our society, trauma, judgment, shame, it is so ingrained in us. It is such a painful and shameful place to be and it's a very vulnerable place to be. And if this is something that you're carrying deeply, then I do encourage you to do the work, to have someone, you can work with me, you can work with someone else, but do the deeper inner work to get the healing so that you can express yourself. And then discover, discover what is it that turns you on discover what what do you really like and how can you communicate it in a way to your man or to the partner that you encounter and it doesn't matter if you meet them for one hour one night a week or for your lifetime and uh one of the things that i find extremely valuable is to make an internal decision and commitment to not be a victim anymore and to take charge of that area in your life, to take charge of what it is that you enjoy, to take charge of what it is that you, hmm, that you really, that you put yourself 
that you make yourself important enough to make this area an important area of your life. And I know the feeling of being rejected. I know the feeling of feeling ashamed. I know the feeling of men not respecting me or, or me trying to say something and, and it comes oddly awkward. But here's the reality from my experience. The more I worked on myself, the more I have been in, the more I was coming from a place of empowerment and I had to do a lot of healing around feeling safe in my own body. I want to be very clear. We attract our own inner world. So when I was very insecure internally, when I was very self-judgmental, when I was very ashamed of myself, I didn't attract, uh, you know, partners or men uh, or encounters that would support me. You, and you create what you need to be healed or what your trauma is resonating with. The older I, I was, the older I'm getting, and that shows again that it's not our body, it's not how our looks, it's about our energy. It's totally about our energy. And for any woman that needs to hear this today, I don't care how you look, it's your energy. Like seriously, I can't tell you how many times I was lying there and had sex and I was thinking, oh my God, um, I have such a, a terrible, a, a fat belly. I have all these scars all over my chest. I mean, if you know my story, like being naked, lying naked like this, underneath someone that was terrifying for me, that was shameful for me. And I was, the only thought I had many times was like, oh my God, they think like I'm ugly, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. No man ever, while having sex with you, has those thoughts because they are turned on in that moment. They don't really care about it. We make such a big deal out of it. And when we change that for ourselves, and yeah, and then you want to, you know, you want to, you want to, be with someone that respects you, but you got to respect that first. If there is someone that is not treating you well, you get to set a boundary. Or if someone does something that you don't like, you get to tell them. And I know it's not easy, but there are certain things that I just literally hate when some guy does that. So I am very clear that's something I don't want to go. So it's very valuable whether you meet someone for a night, one night stand, whether you are uh, meeting, dating someone, whether you are in a relationship, whether you had sex with someone already for 20 years, sit down together and share with each other what's, what turns you on and what turns you off. Like what really, and you listen, right? And then we are so pressured of, oh my God, it has to be this. Or when, when men ask me, oh, what's one of your sexual fantasies or something, you know, we talk about, and then, and then we are right away, oh my God, it has to be this super kinky and super crazy. One, one thing that turns me on is getting a massage. Yeah, men would think, oh, well, that's not, but that's something that turns me on, right? So I don't need crazy toys or crazy whatever. Um, one thing, that's only one, doesn't mean I have other things, but doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. What is it that turns you on? And then you can play around and say, oh, what turns you on? What turns you off? What is something that you don't like me to do? Because then I don't do it. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna leave it for now. I think um, this is a topic that we get to explore further. I don't see any questions. I don't see many comments. So either it's not resonating with you and I'm just talking into the ether or it's a little bit uh, too awkward, what I totally understand. And if you take nothing more out of this today, yes, take some time for yourself to explore yourself, to explore your body. Find out what, what do you like? What does turn you on? And write it down, explore, and also be very clear on what it is that you don't like and write that down. And if you don't know right now, or if you think, oh, I actually don't really even know, even more for you to explore. 
so that you have even the confidence to say something and then you know what it is. That if someone comes and says, hey, what, what is it that, that you like? What turns you on? That you actually know, oh yeah, this is what turns me on. And you might still feel shy about it. You might still not be able to communicate it, but you want to find out first. Discover yourself, pleasure yourself. And pleasure, I don't need only masturbation. Like, of course, I have huge, like, please do so. Like, um, it's a great way to explore yourself. It's a great way to experience pleasure, especially when you're not in a relationship or you don't have regular sexual encounters in some way. Um, see what you like. Pleasure yourself in other ways. Like what turns you on? Maybe it's a nice massage, maybe it's a bath. Maybe for me it's dancing. Like if I feel like a little off and I just want to feel sensual or I want to explore my own, for me it's dancing. For me dancing, uh, I often said like for me, when I dance with someone, it's like having sex on the dance floor. It's not sexual, but it's sensual. So find out what pleasures you. Maybe for you it's going get a nice manicure or put a little makeup on, dress up once, like dress up and go out, flirt with someone. Um, maybe it's your favorite ice cream that you enjoy. Don't overcomplicate it. Create more pleasure in your life and take charge of your own pleasure. If you don't take charge of your own pleasure, no one else will. And it's such an important and beautiful part of our human existence. Like that's one thing that we here on planet earth get to experience this is the party planet on that thing. Like from a soul perspective, I mean, we are non-physical beings. Sexuality has no, you know, meaning, but for the physical body, physicality, intimacy, sexuality is such a beautiful place to explore. And so I invite you to whatever you're taking out of this today, take one little piece and ask yourself, how can I experience more pleasure today? How can I be more pleasure today? Okay, so I'm gonna take one more minute or two to see if anyone has another comment or question. And um, uh, Pamela, that just means you're a courageous woman. <laughs> um, here's a comment. I was rejected so many times from my past marriage. Yeah, I hear you, Megan. It made any connection a struggle to have. Yeah, I'm so with you. Even the ones outside of the bedroom. Yeah, exactly. Interestingly, I felt the lack of intimacy in the bedroom hindered any intimacy just as friendship between us. And I lost connection with myself most of all. Yeah, I so hear you make, thank you so much for sharing openly. You're not alone with that. So many women can relate to you. And I am so happy that you took it on to work on yourself and to really take charge of your own healing, of your woundings, of your fears, of your beliefs. And now you are benefiting from the, you know, from the results. I'm super, super happy for you and thank you for sharing. And Norma is saying, thank you for approaching this topic today. It is so much a point of our lives. Yeah, thank you. And Norma, I want to appreciate you because so many women believe, yeah, and Norma, I, I, um, I don't know exactly, but you shared it with me uh, several times. Um, you're in your 70s, if I'm not mistaken, and this topic is relevant for everyone. And I hate when women are shamed or age, like age is going to, you know, the older we get, as if that's not important. It's important, it's an important part of our lives, no matter how old you are, no matter what gender, no matter what race, no matter what anything, you are a physical being and you, are, you deserve to feel pleasure and joy and love and it's an expression of who you're being thank you create more pleasure yes okay if you dare to share uh just share with me what is one takeaway you get out of this today it doesn't have to be too personal evil but what is one takeaway you're getting out of this today just one takeaway it could be a, a little nugget a little inspiration a thought maybe it's even a judgment or maybe you you know, whatever it is, like take a moment to tune in right now. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and tune in. What is one piece? What is one aha moment? Or what is a takeaway? What's one takeaway that was relevant for you today? And share it here with me. And if this was valuable to you, share it with a friend. 
And to recap, one of the most important pieces I think that came up for today is you're responsible for your own pleasure to the deeper inner work, to the healing work, to really release all those pains, that the abuse, the trauma, the rejection. Love yourself enough to embrace this part of your life. Love yourself enough to bring pleasure in your life. Create your own pleasure inside and outside the bedroom. Even if only for out of 100%, you choose 1% more to be honest, to not, to not pretend you like something that you don't like, to not fake it, no matter how scary it might be, but to really stand up for your own pleasure and discover what you really like. And I promise you, well, I don't promise because I can't make a promise, but I'm pretty sure that when you do that, your life overall will be so much better, not only sexually, not only, um, yeah, not only in encounters in sex, but just in your overall life. Because let's be real, when we are turned on by life, when we feel good about ourselves, when we feel sensual, when we feel, when we feel good, every area of our lives is better. Business, money, health, relationship, communication, parenting, parenting, everything enhances. Create more pleasure in your life. Take charge of your own pleasure. Do the work that it's needed to become more confident, to heal the wounds from the past, and your life will, will be so much better. And if you're in a place where you feel, I, I want this, and I hear you, Sonia, and yet there's still some things that are holding me back and you are ready and you're open to do the deeper inner work and you resonate with me, connect with me, have a conversation with me and see how I can support you one-on-one -on -one to heal some of those places, to really step into your beautiful, you know, like sensual, authentic, sexual energy and explore life on a totally different level. Thank you for being here today. Come back next Monday and I wish you a fantastic and wonderful rest of your day and a good, choosy start to the week. Much love.